Ayo, hey, what is going on everyone? Spegmeister here, coming back at you with another Lazo guide for Halo Wars Defense Edition. On today's video, I'll be covering a longer level in Mission 13, Beachhead. Before I get rolling along with this mission, I'll activate the first nine skulls, which consists of the debuff skulls and the physics aesthetic ones. Local units. So what? No thanks for rescuing me, Sergeant. Later. The Covenant are assembling a huge fleet. Suddenly this LZ doesn't look so good. Spirit, we're gonna need backup. Yes? Where to? And another pelican. Yes? Let's get out of here. I saw a teleporter over there. Local units. Once you gain control of all the infantry units, send them through the teleporter before you get overwhelmed by the flood. Spirit of fire, we are ready for transport. Anders, stay by that beacon. While I wait for the pelican to arrive and get Anders out of here, we'll go around and collect resources and kill off some of the Covenant units in the AO. Besides the one shade turret at the top of this hill, the only major threat to your infantry will be a couple of jackal snipers that will appear later on. And there are the Jackal Snipers. With Anders out of here, then we'll receive Spartan Red Team. So my approach to the first base is pretty similar to my legendary guide. What I'll do is have my Spartans go out and try to get this Locust hijacked. The way I like to do this is to have my front two Spartans draw fire, and then the one in the back will usually hijack it. Once you acquire the Locust, just make sure to get it out of range of the base's turrets.
With the first two turrets off the base, I can safely send one of my ODST units over to the Forerunner Supply Elevator and begin acquiring supplies. After you do enough damage to the base, a spirit dropship will come in and leave off some elite honor guards, but if you manage to target it right away, you can kill it before the reinforcements even touch down. Behind the space there are a few more reinforcements consisting of jackal snipers and one wraith. So I wouldn't send any infantry back there until you can target them with the locust or even with your spartans. So rather than building on this base right off the bat, what I'm going to do is wait and hijack a couple of banshees which will fly overhead from this corner over by the forerunner supply elevator. What I'm going to do is try to target a couple of summits so that I don't have to deal with some banshee reinforcements as I go through the mission. You may get unlucky like I did where the banshee gets destroyed as you're trying to hijack it. So just try to be patient.
as you are waiting around, there will be Covenant reinforcements that will continue to pour into the area and try to set up a base at this spot once more. But this ends up being beneficial because this gives my units an opportunity to earn some veterancy. So there we go, we got a second Banshee, so that didn't take too long. You should be able to achieve this goal within the first 10 to 15 minutes of the mission. Before I take the Banshees off and destroy the summits, I will heal them to get them up to full health. The path that I end up taking to reach the first summit is right along this side of the map. Just trying to follow the edge and avoid any Covenant or Flood units in the area. Once you reach this corner, swing around this event, avoiding all the Flood units that are contained in this area. And here's the location of the first summit that we'll target. Yes. Now as I'm up at this location, there are a line of turrets right along this edge of the cliff. So you'll want to target this turret for sure before you destroy the summit. With that turret down, then you can safely target this summit. With the first summit down, we'll move our banshees up to this next location, where there is another summit. Now this summit won't be a threat to our first base, but it will be a threat later on in the mission, so I like to deal with it now so that I don't forget about it. Just be careful not to bring your banshees too close to the ramp because there is a scarab right about halfway up, as well as several honor guards, and you don't want to aggravate them too early. If that does happen, there is the potential that those units could move to another location. And that can actually make things a little bit more challenging later on. Units. 
so now before I do build on this base, when I bring the Banshees back, I'll want to scout this area to make sure there aren't any massive threats to the base, which would include hunters and wraiths at this point. So the main strategy behind getting this base set up is to focus on getting a couple turrets ready. I like to set one up on this slot as well as in this back corner, so that way I can target any hunters and wraiths pretty quickly. And I won't have to rely as heavily on the banshees. Rather than producing vehicles to help bolster up my forces, I'll set up a field armory to upgrade the turrets to tier 3. Field armory complete. By doing this, I won't have to focus too heavily on repairing the turrets, and I'll also have more hit points and a higher damage output. Turret improved. Got it. I'll get it. Got it. Supply pad complete. I'll get it. Ready. You got it. You got it. Too easy. <laughs> Supply pad upgrade. Too easy. Carpet bomb improved.
So once again, as I'm waiting around, I'm just using the Banshees to scout the area, keep the base clear of any hunters or wraiths, or if they get too close, I can at least prepare myself better. I can additionally take my time with destroying these uh, bomber forms that the Flood produce, which will work towards the secondary objective for the level. Carpet bomb improved. Regeneration, regeneration aborted. Enforcements research. Enemy engagement. Yes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Regenerate healing targets. Unless if the Flood already beat to you to the task, there is a wraith that will be located in this area. Yes. Carpet bomb. Improved. 
That was something I neglected earlier in the level, but it's not necessarily a major threat even when you manage to establish your base. But I kind of sensed that the, with the flood spawning in, I had to guess that the wraith already was destroyed. Now for the army that I end up constructing, it will consist of about 9 or 10 hornets, as well as a couple of vultures. The two banshees that I have my spartans in, I do like to let the covenant destroy those so that I can put one of my spartans in a hornet, and the other one is going to acquire a scarab, which I'm going to do after I have a few hornets available. When you have a few hornets available, send them over to this location where the scarab is. So right here, I'll let my Spartan Banshee get destroyed. I can let the Covenant up here deal with it, or I can let these Flood-infected Covenant take it out. Either way, it's acceptable. And I'll do the same with the other Hornet, or the other Banshee, just to get it out of the way.
solid units. Roger that. Yes, got it. Ready, you got it. Vulture, all stations. So as I make my way up this ramp, there is a shade turret located up here, as well as some Covenant infantry. And the best way to handle it is to have your Banshee try to send it out of the way once it gets low on health so that it doesn't get caught in a really big trap. At the top of this ramp, there is one more summit that we'll have to take out, and that'll be the last of the summits that will be a threat to any of our base locations. If you somehow discover that your population is uneven and you want to build another Hornet, have one of your infantry units go out and die. If you have the flamethrower unit, that's a pretty easy choice. So I'll send it to the next base location where I can lose it quite quickly. Now we got all 10 Hornets. As I begin my attack on the second base, what I'll do is target the back two turrets with the Scarab. Then I can start hitting any secondary structures nearby. While it's tempting, don't use the carpet bomb to destroy this base. You actually want to keep that in your back pocket to help deal with any hunters and elite honor guards that will come in via spirit dropships. Those aircraft will show up at this corner of the area. So here we go, there are the spirit dropships, and they'll leave off hunters and elite honor guards here.
So when you're dealing with the remaining units, go for the hunters first because they will be the biggest threat to the scarab. After that, you can deal with any other additional vehicles or infantry, assuming they don't target your aircraft. And then before you build a base on the site, just go around and make sure the area is secure. Pick up coordinates set. And while I'm getting the base set up, I'll send my remaining units at the base to come over to the secondary site. At this time, the mission should go a lot faster with, uh, without the summits in play. At this location, I'll use a mix of anti-air turrets, as well as either anti-vehicle or anti-infantry. This will help to deal with not the Covenant, but the flood that come in over this light bridge. So unlike what I did at the second base where I used my scarab to target the turrets, I'm going to use the vultures to do that dirty work. The reason I do this is because there are usually a lot of hunters over in this spot, and sometimes you might have to deal with some infantry out in front of the base. RPG research. Turret improved. Yes. Turret improved. All units. Turret improved. Supply pad upgraded. With the last turret out of play, then you can send the Hornets and the Scarab to engage the base.
So there's a whole mess of Covenant units at this spot, so I'll quickly drop a Carpet Bomb to take out as many as I can. And of course, just like the other two base sites, we'll have some more reinforcements coming in via the dropships. This time you'll have three spirits that will leave off reinforcements. Once again, it's just Honor Guard Elites and Hunters. And once you have the third base location, I'll send these units over via the transport. That ends up being the quickest way to send them around the map. Station complete. Yes, yes, Fortress upgrade complete. All units. Just like with all the other bases, make sure to build turrets to defend yourself against the flood units. The Covenant won't be an increasing threat for the rest of the mission, but the flood will still spawn in since the Covenant won't be able to distract them. Once you pass through this teleporter, there will be three turrets in the vicinity. Just try to tackle them right off the bat. I like to let them target the scarabs so that way my aircraft don't take much damage. With those out of the picture, I'll send my hornets up here, quickly close this vent so that I don't have to deal with flood spawning behind me when I go forward. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there was a scarab at this location, and assuming I'm right, it's still going to be there. So here's how I approach this scarab. What I'll do is send my own scarab into position, 
and then I'll call upon my vultures to barrage it, then call in the hornets, and then drop a carpet bomb. And if I do it fast enough, I won't take much damage from the scarab itself. All I'm left with after that point are these elite honor guards. And with your aircraft in play, those units will not be a massive problem. Once you achieve that, then you can go ahead and start targeting the defenses around the fourth and final base. The Covenant units that you'll deal with in front of this base can either be the Jackals, or sometimes it could be a bunch of ghosts. It really just depends. I'm not sure if that's something that's difficulty related or not, but just something to keep in mind. And once again, we'll have some more reinforcements from the Spirit Dropship. Just try to keep your distance on them. Again, it's just more elite honor guards and hunters. Definitely prioritize the hunters. They'll once again be your greatest threat. And last but not least, when this area is clear, then you can set up the base. And that'll finish off the mission. The professors filled me in. Good work, Sergeant. Stand by for mission briefing. So there we have it. I managed to pull off a gold medal and got this about 10 minutes under part time. Considering how things went early on, I thought this ended up turning out to be a decent run. Um, once again, just to reiterate some of the earlier points, just try to target the summits so that you don't have to deal with wave upon wave of banshees as you're setting up your base sites. And if you want to target the optional objectives to go for the gold medal, uh, you just need to take control of the scarab and kill off 10 of the bomber forms which I was able to do pretty quickly early on. Uh, in some cases, you may have to go out of your way to find the bomber forms once you reach the end of the mission, but it's not too massive a problem with the hornets that you have. So, anyhow, hopefully you guys enjoyed this guide. Thank you all for tuning in on this episode. I've appreciated all the support that I've been getting on my guides thus far, and hopefully I will catch you in a future episode. Hope you all have a good day or night, and I'll see you later.